Hi there, it's Jason from Codemanship with a video that's been a long time coming. When I have discussions with developers about test-driven development, it often becomes apparent that they don't actually know what that is and they've never seen anybody do it. Uh, and therefore, a lot of developers have misconceptions about TDD, including many developers who believe that they're doing test-driven development. Uh, the first misconception I want to clear up in this video is that test-driven development equals testing or unit testing. A lot of developers, they tell me they're doing test-driven development, but when I look at what they're actually doing, what they mean is we write unit tests. Now, as you can see from the demonstration here, that's not what it means. Test-driven development means driving the design of our code from tests. It means using tests as specifications for code that doesn't exist yet, basically. Things we want the code to do that it currently doesn't do. And we drive the design of that code directly from writing tests. So we start by writing a test that fails because we're referring to code, for example, referring to functions that don't exist. And then we work backwards from the test, declaring the functions or the modules or the classes that we need in order to write that test. Um, so it's test tests as a specification. It's a design process, not a testing process. That's very important to remember. Test-driven development is software design. And it's a, a sort of a micro cycle. So you write one little test um, that normally asks one question, ideally. Um, so you have one failing test. You'll then write the simplest code possible to pass that test, quick and dirty, get it passing quickly. And then very importantly, the last piece of the, the cycle, if you like, review that code and if necessary, refactor it. So if you think you need to make it easier to understand or remove duplication, or if you think that, that code is in the wrong place, for example, my total function was in the wrong file, it was not supposed to be part of the test code, then you fix that problem before you move on to the next test case. And what I'm doing in this demonstration here is I'm fleshing out the design of a function that calculates the total of items in a shopping basket, one test case, one example, if you like, at a time. And I'm working backwards, if you'll notice, from the test assertion. So I start with the end user outcome. What are we expecting to get? And then I work backwards in my test to the setup. And I work backwards from the test to the source code that I need for that test. So my workflow, my design flow, if you like, is always moving in that direction from the test to the source code. And in particular, from the test assertion, from the outcome to the source code, the simplest source code that will achieve that outcome. And I'm working one failing test at a time. This is another misconception. Some people, when they complain about what they think is test-driven development, say, well, you have to know all the requirements up front. Um, no, you don't. You have to know one requirement. <laughs> if you have one requirement, you can start. It's a bit like video streaming. You don't have to wait for the whole set of requirements to be um, downloaded, if you like, before you can start, you can press play. Um, you just need one requirement to get you started. What is the total of items in an empty shopping basket? And we're off to the races, off we go. So TDD is a design process. It works one failing test at a time. It drives the design of our code directly from the test. It's always moving in that direction. So. A lot of people say, well, because it's, it's a bit of a, a mental leap um, to, to write tests for code that doesn't exist yet and work backwards from there. But once you've seen it done once, most people, it just clicks. They go, oh, that's what you mean. And you'll notice that WebStorm is designed, kind of designed with that in mind. There are lots of little shortcuts for working back from a reference to a variable that hasn't been declared. And it will generate that declaration for you or generate that function or generate that class for you. So there's a lot of working backwards functionality in many IDEs. You'll find this kind of thing in VS Code and Visual Studio as well. Um, so we're working backwards from our tests, um, designing our code one test case at a time, always doing the simplest thing we can think of that will pass um, all of our tests up to that point. Quick and dirty will do it. But then very importantly, we take the time to review that code if necessary, we refactor. And when it comes to refactoring, this is where TDD and refactoring kind of join hands. Um, refactoring is dangerous without a pretty decent set of 
automated regression tests, fast regression tests. And without refactoring, test-driven design is not sustainable. That's why in the original Extreme Programming book, it was referred to as test-first design, and refactoring was a separate discipline. But I think the, the authors of the book quickly realized that, no, refactoring needs to be part and parcel of the cycle. Otherwise, frankly, people will forget to do it. Um, so refactoring is a very important step. It's where a lot of the design decisions get made. It's where we kind of discover what would be the cleanest, most maintainable design that would pass these tests before we move forward. You'll notice also in the demonstration that I'm using version control. So after I get to a point where I'm happy with each new test and happy with the code, um, then I'll uh, I'll commit that. And you'll see at the end that um, I'll probably decide to push it as well um, once I've achieved my particular sort of mini goal here of getting this total function working. So this kind of works hand in hand as well with version control and continuous integration. Um, again, the tests are very helpful in that. Um, and version control um, helps us to do this safely. So if we mess up or take a wrong turn, we can easily back, get back to something we're happy with, just as we do when we're refactoring. So that's really what test-driven development is. It's not testing. You don't need to know all the requirements up front. You don't need to write the code or declare the classes or the interfaces before you write the tests. The whole idea is that you are working backwards from the test, from the outcomes, ideally, that the end user wants to the simplest, most maintainable code that will satisfy those outcomes. And at the end, you're left with a pretty decent suite of tests, but you may want to revisit those as well and ask yourself, are these the tests we need going forward?